late afternoon light streams in gently through the lounge window. Our subject gazes toward the evening sun and considers the fact that this isn't actually the sun, it's an artificial light. Hiding in plain sight and disguised with overexposure, we have our light. Equipped with a Fresnel lens, firing into the lounge window on an overcast afternoon. This is the Godox NOLED M600D, a powerful 740 watt LED cob light. When shooting with a more powerful light, a common tool to use in conjunction with it is a Fresnel lens. By attaching the compatible Fresnel, we can direct our light into more of a parallel beam, and we've targeted our light directly into the lounge window in this shot allowing us to both control exactly where our light goes, and making for a more realistic representation of the way sunlight functions, with an even exposure throughout the beam. A powerful light in these conditions is a necessity, as we're competing with the daylight that's already spilling into the room, and since we have a powerful light, we can use this ambient daylight along with it, so we're forming a realistic recreation of sky and sun both layered into the image. We've implemented a similar lighting setup in this shot. Initially, we had soft light coming through the window, from the hazy afternoon outside, but we wanted to brighten things up and create the feeling of a sunny afternoon. So up goes our M600D, again with the Fresnel lens attached, directed into the window and room. Now that's a fair amount of light. It's set to 100%, but instead of turning down the exposure on our camera, or the brightness down on the light itself, we're going to control the light hitting the scene in other ways, taking advantage of the power output of the M600D, as if we're actually competing with natural sunlight itself. We'll start here, with this back wall, it looks a little bare. With a boom arm set up by our window, we're going to clip on a DIY Kukaloris with the intent to break up some of the light coming through the window. Our Kukaloris, or cookie, has been positioned in such a way to only cast shadows on this back wall, making for a more controlled, yet more natural feeling patch of sunlight. We've noticed now that the wall on the other side is looking pretty dark in comparison. By placing a mirror on the other side of the table our subject is sitting at, we can bounce some of our light back at this darker section of wall, making for just a small slash of light, but ultimately bringing more balance to our frame. Finally, we'll deal with the overexposure on the face. By simply clipping some black material just to the right of our cookie, we've blocked some of the light from hitting the face. This still leaves us with some indirect exposure from the window, keeping our face lit, but not overexposed. In post-production, we also decided to use a power window to reduce the brightness on the lower section of the frame, just to take the edge off and bring more attention to the face. So we worked with the maximum power of the light, as if we were working with the sun itself, to create a more natural feeling image. A powerful light isn't only useful when you need to replicate sunlight, it can also be beneficial when augmenting existing light in your frame. Here, our subject sits in a room, a bay of windows behind him. It's quite bright outside, and if we want to see any detail out of our window, we're going to need to bring down the exposure in our camera. In this case, we're going to need a couple of stops of ND. Now we have detail out of the window, but no exposure in the room. So usually, this is where lighting comes in. We'd like a soft light from camera left to represent the natural light coming through the window. But we don't have too much space either side of the sofa. We can solve this by again taking advantage of our Fresnel lens. We'll clip a large length of bleached muslin material to a boom arm on the left side of the sofa. This will act as our key light. On the other side of our sofa, we'll place our Godox M600D, attach our Fresnel lens, and narrow our beam down just a little bit. 
Since our subject doesn't stand up or start jumping around in our shot, the beam passes over what our camera is capturing, bouncing from the bleached muslin and providing a key light on our subject and scene. But it's a little dark, and although this could work depending on the mood we'd like to convey in the shot, we wanted something that better represents the light from the window, so we need even more light. Remember, we darkened our image with ND, to properly expose the natural light outside. This is kind of like giving our camera sunglasses to allow it to see better, and if we're darkening the natural light outdoors with these sunglasses, we're also darkening any other lights we use in the room. So we need a light powerful enough to expose well, even when our camera is wearing shades. So we actually had our M600D set to 50%. At this level of output, we're roughly looking at the kind of brightness you'd be achieving at full power on a 300 watt light, like the Godox VL300. But we've got 740 watts to utilize here, so let's push that straight up to 100%. Now that's much closer to what we had in mind. Even with two stops of ND in front of our camera, the light is powerful enough to give enough exposure to our scene, and this is after being bounced from the bleached muslin. As we lose light output when we diffuse or bounce it, it's vital in these situations to have a powerful light so that it can still provide enough exposure when we want to soften it with diffusion or bounce. And if we want a slightly lighter feeling scene, we can introduce some fill light. We'll raise up another large piece of bleached muslin material placed just behind our camera and use a Godox SL152 bounced into it. This makes for a bit of a brighter, punchier look, wrapping the light around our face and lighting up more of the room. You can see that if we had a bigger space to shoot in, making use of a powerful light would also have been a great help in covering a large area easily, whilst providing enough exposure to light the scene. 